Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Hey guys, this is Gene, and welcome to the overdue Week 5 MVP video. And congratulations to Lapras for winning the Week 4 overall server MVP and earning the It's a Trap emote to use in our server. Nice job, Lapras. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. And after the video is over, please make sure to vote on this week's poll for the Week 5 overall server MVP. I hope you guys enjoy these nominees. Starting us off in Peach League, we have the Ogre Pond Wellspring. And as you can see, its team is down 4v5 right here. Magirna's just had a sweep stopped by Haze Toxapex. And so it's going to come in this turn, and let's see what it can do. So, it's going to use its Water Absorb here to be immune to that liquidation. And then it's going to go for Terra Water to get out of that weakness to Poison Typing. Although it goes for Baneful Bunker on the Sword Stance, and so now it's a problem for the Toxapex. And it catches a Crit Knockoff, which is huge because Toxapex has Haze. So that was some really good luck there. And from here, an Ivy Cudgel destroys that. It goes for Mega Evolution, knockoff almost is enough to take it out anyways, and it does get toxic, but that might be too little too late here as Ivy Cudgel with a crit takes it out as well. Then comes in the Pheasantipity, which just gets smashed by a plus two Ivy Cudgel. And the Porygon 2 is in, it's the last hope, but ooh, it does eat the hit, hits a T-Bolt, and the Toxic makes it down to 3%. And Ogre Pawn clutches it out there, getting a nice 5 kill way to finish the game. In the Beauty League, we have a pretty classic Magirna sweep. And so the game is 5 to 5. Um, and importantly, Stealth Rocks are up on this side uh, because this Ho Oh is actually leftovers and not heavy duty boots. So it's going to come in and take 50% on rocks. But it's 5-5, five five. Magirna is here, it's got the grassy terrain up, which is really nice. That means earthquake damage will be being half damage, uh, which Magirna is weak to. And it gives Magirna a little bit of passive recovery as well, so it's really set up well for Magirna here. It's gonna come in here after a U-turn, and it's gonna get the free switch with a Toxic. And now it's in a really great spot, because uh, the fish can't do a whole lot to it. And so it does get a shift gear here where Alamomola goes for a wish, uh, gets healed up, and now it's ready to deal some damage. Ho-Oh comes in, takes that 50% as Magirna sets up a Calm Mind. Now that wish does get passed to Ho-Oh, healing it up to full, and a store power does almost nothing. However, the Sacred Fire is going to proc the weakness policy, and now it's trouble. And it catches a crit. I'm not entirely sure if that mattered or not. But that is going to be game from here, because it is just going to outspeed everything. And with that much power, um, with stored power and the attack, the special attack boosts from its Soul Heart ability, it's just going to run through the entire team from here, completely unchecked. And so that's what happens when Magirna gets loose. It can just annihilate a whole team. Well played there. Good job, Shelly. Over in the Brain League, we have Rapidash G, which is a super cool nominee this week. Uh, it's going to come in when its team is down 4-5 to five to try to get a revenge kill here. And it's important to note that this Gligar has had it a Violet tricked away and has been given choice specs. So anyways, it's going to come in here against the Terra Fighting Breloom. And it's going to go for a nice Terra Fairy and click Play Rough, which with Noah Violite is going to absolutely smash this Gligar. And so that will be the first kill for Rapidash, but we will be back with more. And again, this Rapidash is in against the Breloom here. Both have already used Terra, uh, but it's Rapidash versus the world. Uh, this Vulcanian is down to 37%, and the Breloom is at full and has used Terra Fighting. So let's watch it clean up. It's going to outspeed and just Oko with a Terra Stab Fairy Play Rough. And then this thing is weak after rocks, and it just picks up its second and third kill just like that. Great way to finish the game. Always fun to see 
Pokemon that don't get a lot of shine getting nominated for MVP. In the Muscle League, we've gotten a set I'm really excited about. I've never uh, seen this specific set before. And so our nominee is going to be the Cleavor here. And as you can see, it's in a rough spot. It's down three to five, and there are some massive threats on the other side of the field. Uh, you can see it really would want Stealth Rocks up because it's got one, two, three Mons weak to rocks on the other side. So you can see how this comeback could start. Now it's going up against the Zapdos G. Um, and so let, <laughs> let's just watch this unplay. This is hilarious. So it goes Terra Rock. Now that it drops the C tier, but it still takes a huge amount from that Brave Bird and misses the Stone Axe. I mean, this is just brutal. It doesn't get the rocks up. It's going to take another huge shot from Brave Bird, and the Zapdos is still alive because this Mon has the sharpness ability, so that Stone Axe does huge damage, and it would be neutral to Zapdos. Should kill it from here, especially with Terra Rock. So, huge, huge miss there, except. It's blunder policy. It gets the speed boost. Now it's going to outspeed the Zapdos. Get the rocks up. In comes Ogre Pond. That's not a problem. It goes for Terra Water. And we still have X Scissor, which is still going to be enough, even after getting rid of the grass typing to kill. Kirum comes in, takes rocks damage. That's not going to live a Stone Axe. Drops that as well. Beedrill comes in again, takes the rock damage. No chance, as long as he's landing Stone Axes like this. Not a chance, and Rotom is boots, but Stone Axe is enough anyways. What a crazy game. I, I did not see that coming. That was awesome. Next up is the Stellar League, and our nominee is Mega Slowbro. And kind of like the Magirna before it, this is just Mega Slowbro doing what Mega Slowbro does, which is being a disgustingly strong... Call Mind Sweeper. And so it's got a big threat in, or sure few rapid strikes. Luckily, both of its stabs are perfectly countered by Slowbro. So the Ho O is just going to switch out, get some Regenerator, and in comes Slowbro to eat this hit. Gets a crit, gets a crit. Obviously, it's required crits here from Surging Strikes. And it's going to go into Tapu Fini, another Call Mind Sweeper. And with the Misty Terrain up, neither Mon can be statused until the terrain goes away, and so both of them just start setting up Call Mines. The Shadow Ball is a nice bring. It's doing 33%, which is pretty good. And when Mega Slowbro clicks that Mega Evolve button, you know something's about to happen, because it loses the Regenerator ability, but it gains the Shell Armor ability, meaning you cannot hit it with a critical hit. And... So if it ever Mega Evolves, it's probably staying in. It probably doesn't plan to switch out anymore because it doesn't have Regenerator. So both monsters charge all the way up. Mega Slowbro is packing the stored power, and that is going to be just way too much damage here. And that is enough to take it out in two hits. The Karate Kid comes back in, goes for a T-Punch, and it lives just barely enough health. It can't catch a critical hit, but it could paralyze it here, which could spell disaster. But three Thunder Punches, no Paralyzes, and Slowbro's had enough and just drops it with a stored power. Uh, go in here, go for that Stone Edge. Maybe they forget it can't be hit by a critical hit as Slowbro goes to the Slack Off and they go, oh yeah, no crits. So we're just going to go for our strongest attacks, Earth Power. And Slowbro's seen enough, and it's just going to drop it with another stored power. Comes in, gets its Quark Drive boost, goes for an Earthquake, which... Barely tickles Mega Slowbro and just an Oko again with stored power. Rotom's going to come in and burn it. Maybe it should have done that earlier. I don't know. But down to a stored power. And it doesn't matter at this point. It's going to go for an agility. Uh, uh, there just wasn't really any hope. And it has a flamethrower anyways. And that is the game. Mega Slowbro just dropped the entire team. Huge sweep there. Mega Slowbro doing what Mega Slowbro does best. In Victory Lee, we have easily the most creative set of the week here going to Howling the Intei. And so it's coming in up 5-4, to four, and it's been a really great game so far, very evenly matched. Now Lugia here is Leftovers, and has gone for a Calm Mind already, so it's threatening at this point. Um, everything else, well, the Conkledur is pretty much dead, it's going to die to hazards, but everything else is pretty much at full health here. And... 
this is going to be a really unique Intei set. The first thing I want you to know is its pressure ability. And so that means every move the opponent uses is going to cost two of its PP instead of the normal one. And that's going to come into play. Let me run it here, because this one's going to take a while. So Lugia is going to go for Roost to get back to its multi-scale, and Intei is just going to roar it out there, start shuffling it around with all that hazard damage, which is really strong. It's going to get up a sub as Gouging Fire goes for a Dragon Dance, and reveals leftovers. And it goes for a Dragon Claw, which does break the sub, and there's another Roar, which gets the kill into Conkelder with the hazards. So that's one kill, kind of for Entei, kind of for Gliscor. Gouging Fire comes in, it's down to 30% now, although it does reveal that it has Morning Sun. But important to note that because of pressure, that used actually two of the eight PP for Morning Sun. It says seven out of eight there, but that's because Showdown doesn't view it correctly when pressure's in play. So really, it only can use Morning Sun three more times. It's in trouble. Uh, Lugia comes back out this time, takes the rock damage, taking it out of its multi-scale. And Intei is still in, almost back up to full with those lefties, and it eats an Earth Power, which does 34%, but it reveals Calm Mind. So now Earth Power is doing far less than we thought originally, and it goes for Terra Normal, which is usually used for extreme speed from Intei, but obviously not in this case, because it's a Calm Mind set. But oh, that's why it goes for Calm, or er, the, sorry, the Terra Normal, so that it's no longer weak to the Earth Power. Really cool bring there. Earth Power now takes two hits to break a sub, so Entei can start stacking up Calm Minds here um, against the Lugia. And so it does get up a couple here, and oh my gosh, it's taking forever to break a sub now. It's almost all the way set up. Lugia is back to mar uh, multi-scale, but that really doesn't matter since we know it has a roar on Entei anyways. It's just eating these Earth Powers for breakfast. There's the roar. Goes into this guy, and this guy's a really interesting mon. I don't even want to try to pronounce its name. Um, but it likes to go for things like Mirror Coat, which could actually be a problem for the Entei. It also has Recover. And so this is actually going to be kind of a pain for the Entei, and it's going to be a bit of a stalemate here. But as long as that sub is up, it can't do a whole lot to hurt the Entei. And so it's just going to keep clicking Calm Mind as it goes for Mirror Coats here. And, you know, there's 32 of them, so really it can use it 16 times against pressure. So Entei has to roar it out of here. Lugia's back in, takes more rock damage. But Entei is all the way set up. Lugia doesn't want any of that at this point. So more hazard damage. Goes for a Lava Plume, which does 11%, which is just pathetically low. It goes and uses its first recover here as Entei roars it out into Gouging Fire, which gets smacked around by hazards. Gets a little lefty recovery, and it switches back. Um, this time, the Entei goes for another roar. Gonna get more chip on Gouging Fire. Oh, almost got the kill with the hazards there. 3%. The lefties save it as it goes for its second, third, and fourth Morning Sun, if you will. So now it only has two more Morning Suns left. And there's a Lava Plume, going to do 12% and catch a burn. And you know what, guys? I'm just going to speed this up here, because this is kind of just how it happens here. They can't do anything to this Entei. Entei is just shuffling it around. They're losing PP left, right, and center. There's Lugia's Roost, another 2 PP gone there. Uh, goes for a big Lava Plume and catches the burn. I mean, and, and that's pretty much the end of the game. They can't do anything to this Entei. Intei is going to just slowly wear them down, and they have no chance of stopping it. It's fully set up at 100% health behind a substitute. The hazards are starting to rack up. The burn damage is starting to rack up. And eventually, Intei's opponent is just going to forfeit. Huge Lava Plume there, doing over half of Lugia's health. And, and I mean, it, they're just going to eventually give it up here and give the final three kills to Intei, which it was going to eventually get. And there's the forfeit. Super cool set from Intei. Reminder, we don't condone forfeits in this league. Please try and play the battles out, but this one was just going to take forever. I get it. And finally, here we are in the Premier League, and you'll notice we have yet another Magirna submission. Uh, stop me if this one seems familiar, but Magirna is in against a bulky opponent that can't do a whole lot to threaten it, so what do you think is going to happen? 
They're going to be forced to switch, and Magirna gets off a shift gear here, doubling its speed, gets off a Calm Mind, and it's bulky enough to live an Earthquake from Garchomp with a huge attack stat. Gets off a Draining Kiss, which crits, heals it up, and reveals the Rocky Helmet, and Store Power is more than enough to kill it from there. That's one kill for Magirna. And it's going to outspeed here, go for a fat Draining Kiss to get a lot of that health back, eat a crit Ivy Cudgel even. And get another kill with Draining Kiss, so that's two. Next in is Garchomp and Draining Kiss. I mean, you know the rest. It's Magirna. This is just what Magirna does. If you give it one turn to set up, it can just sweep you for all of your remaining Pokemon. Magirna is a massive threat and cannot be underestimated. Nicely done here in the Premier League for Magirna, the second of the week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please remember to go to the description and vote on who this week's overall server MVP will be. Also, go ahead and give the video a like while you're here. I've been Gene, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.